Hi everyone, hope you're good guys and welcome to a new video. So today I'm gonna talk about Max for Live device that does something that I wish to push to as this by default. This Max for Live device is called Cordoma 3 and what basically is allowed you to do is playing three note to four note chords with just one finger chip and having different kind of chords available on your push to matrix pad by scale or you can make as well a personal selection of chords. Yeah, let's jump into Ableton and I will show you what you can do with this plugin. I'm gonna make a little tutorial as well how to use it and how to take the best out of it. So yeah, let's jump into it. All right, so basically when you get the device, there is three device, there is this chord or mat, which is the main device and you have uh, intense scale device as well and the loopback device so these two last i will come back to it later first we're gonna focus on the main here you have you can click on setting here are a few settings uh so you can first select your push and you can activate it so you can see now the push i've changed and you can go back to normal or you can go back to this scale mode you can risk and push if you have trouble or if you disconnect it and reconnect it and then this parameter will come back to this later and then you can open this window so you can select to put always on top if you don't want to be hide and you can zoom i'm gonna zoom it a little bit like this way for the tutorial it's gonna take a bigger part of the window and so you have different sections that i'm gonna cover today but basically the idea of this device is to pick up a scale and then being able to pick up some chord which are part of the scale and then once you made the selection you can try to different combination of chords. so you can choose which scale here for example you can choose d and you can choose minor but you can choose any other kind of weird scale and and then here you can see when you have a blue dot it means that this chord c major is part of the scale but you can see here you have g sus2 oh, you have g minus seven so here you can pre-listen all of the code you like and if you don't want to click and be able to use the push you can press play all code and basically here you have the code color which corresponds to the code color on the push and basically all of the code from the D minor scale are available here so and then you can pick up the code you prefer so now you can switch back to the previous mode by cl clicking on select on the push and you can go back to you play all chord by clicking there back so this is like all the code possible and this the square this selection of 16 pad is your code slot selection and basically what you can do you can just drag and drop code you like and you can you make your own shopping but like if you was at the market and pick up the code that you will think will fit well together and you can make uh, little selection so i'm gonna do randomly to fasten the process but and now that you have your selection you can see on the push everything became pink and now you can just play out of your selection And then trying to find the chord combination that you like so obviously if there is a chord you didn't like you can just overwrite one and change it you can also swap between two slots for example if you want to reorganize a little bit so also here you can see you can store eight chord selection per scale so for example you can go there and if you don't like this one you can click here on clear or chord slot and you clear all and then for example let's say you want a smaller one and then you see you still have your full one big here and then you have a second one where you just have here so that's a cool feature as well so obviously from that you can change for example b in g torian and it will change all of your code selection and making sure it's following what you have selected in the first place so that's very cool as well so you can also straight away change if for example there is a code you didn't like you can straight away change it here changing the root and change it to something for example which is not in the scale that's something possible as well 
Now you have also global code setting, so you can invert, for example, the code. So, for example, you see here, if I invert, or just one, or more. So you can invert your code, or you can pitch it. octave upper octave down and the cool thing about these two features is that you can do per chord so for example here you can invert the way you want and it won't affect the other global one and change same you can change the octave Here, for example, if I invert positively, it won't affect it. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. And two other features that you have, which are global, is the strength, which basically, instead of playing all notes together in the same time, it will play the note of your chord slightly delayed one from another, or one after the other. So let's say you have this four note here, but if I add some strum, and if I go up, you see it goes slowly. And if I go close. So parts are maybe not the best example for that, but you get the idea if you go up. As you see it goes from down to up. And if you go the other way, it will go from up to down. And strip kind of this is kind of the speed so the closer you get to the zero the faster it will play the note until if you go to the middle it's playing all together but you can adjust the speed as well with this human eyes you see here it's playing even though i'm at the min at here it's like very slow and here it's like very fast And you can put in random or strum mode so random it will play the note in the random order and strum will be like more like kind of a guitar so like i said from up to down if you go this way or if you go this way up from down to up so that's pretty cool so now if you don't have a push to you can still basically map all of this pad here all of this chord slot to any midi controller which called pad so for example I have my Bitstep Pro here. I have my Bitstep Pro and let's say I want to use the 16 pad to map to this uh, 16 chord slot. So what you can do is just click here and now you can just press on your pad and it's MIDI, classic MIDI learning. So you can do that with all of your pads. This way now. You can use the Business Pro to trigger your MIDI core slot. So that's super handy. And if I switch to, to a keyboard, you can do exactly the same. So I am now in my good old Akai LPK25 and you can do exactly the same now. And just map some other notes. So just make sure you don't map two notes to the same chord slot. But then yeah. like here or here but yeah, you get the idea you can do a midi mapping to all of the slots and then play with your keyboard so that's great because you don't need obviously the push to one thing you can do if, when you play all chord it work as well so now if you want to go back to your push and the kind of the standard midi mapping you can click on midi mapping and you have standard mapping and now it's back to your normal classic MIDI mapping. So you have global trigger. So this is cool if you, for example, you have a MIDI clip like this here and you see I just have one note playing and but in a, in a certain rhythmical way. And what you can do with this global trigger, for example, if I press play, it replay this one, but I can on the fly change the chord. It's playing. So for example, it can be handy if you have like a, a rhythmical pattern, but you want to add some notes to it, some chords.
and you can do this on the fly so that's a nice handy feature all right and now let's talk about a feature i love here you can add octave so i love this feature because for example i have this chord here and let's say you want the root to play uh, as well an octave down you can just click here and now i have a stronger chord and you can select to play now the second an octave upper And you can really create very rich chord and that's pretty cool and you have different presets as well that you can uh, store and save uh, so that's a really great feature and yeah this scale correction is basically when you play with a keyboard and you can adjust that so as i didn't really use it with a keyboard i um, i can't really help you with that one now you have as well this last part i haven't talked which is basically you can select the velocity you want uh, the two streets as well which is there you see you can have different effect so you have different mode and then you can see which notes are mapped you can see your input node you can see your output node that's what i was or both so input it's maybe when you have a midi clip playing you can see it's playing here in yellow and Obviously, I'm not in Global Tribber, but if I go back in Global Tribber, now you have the input in yellow and the output in red. And then you have a panic button when you have like MIDI bug or stuff like that, or like a notch playing too long. You can just click there and then it's going to sort it out all of your problem. So now I'm about to talk about how, for example, when you found A nice chord progression and you want to record it so basically when you use the push there is a problem because obviously how the device is made you cannot really uh, record what you're playing you see here there is no midi the reason being if i'm not mistaken if i understood well how it works the push to send information straight away to the max for Live device and it's not going through the midi track and through ableton so this track doesn't receive any midi so to speak so in order to do that, there is this device called Codomat Push Loopback Device and you need to put it on another MIDI track and activate it. And MIDI from you don't want any MIDI and MIDI 2 you want to select your chord or mat. And now on your chord or mat, you want to activate the Push Loopback. And now you should be able to... Yes, you see. You have your knot. So now you can see it's just one note so it might be a problem for you if you want to have your code uh, i don't know if there is a shorter way but the only way i found is you go to midi and as the input you select your code or mat and you press in and usually this if it's in auto so it's gonna play this this way and it should record your code progression And it's all sorted. And the last thing's a little bit complex is the instance scales. And this is where you're gonna use this instance scale. So this is similar to the Ableton scale plugin. The thing is like, for example, here I have an arpeggiator. And let's say I want this arpeggiator and this track, whatever note I feed into it, what to be in the same scale that the one I'm playing with the chordomat. So in order to do that, you can see here I'm in group two and I've select this track here in group one. So here in group two, you can mute or unmute. You can put it in receive mode, which basically the plugin will receive the note from the chord or mat. So for example, now if I play a chord on the chord or mat, it will trigger the chord into the arpeggiator. And you can
you can put in track in which basically I'm gonna use this one. So this one in, in tracking mode is more like acting like a scale. So for example, let's say I have here, I have a sequence made by the MDD snake, but I want to be in the same scale than my called OMAT. So I can just put tracking And select the scale so you see like for example now if I change the scale here in my code mat it will change the scale plugin basically the, the scale as well so imagine you have the Ableton scale plugin but that's gonna change automatically according to which scale you are inside the code mat plugin so for example this one now is in F minor but if I change here and I choose the A Iwato. It's like if now this scale plugin, the scale here is in A Iwato. So you can see basically here, this one is exactly the same than this one. But if I change here, you can see now it's changed as well. And every time I change, it's changed the same. So this is pretty handy if you want to jump and have everything in the same scale. All right. But the cool thing that you can do as well with this one, and you can select that it's actually following the code. So basically the scale will be determined by the chord you play. So let me, for example, here I play this chord here and it's create this scale here. But if I play another chord, you see it's changed the scale basically. And if you want to do on the fly live, you can click here in some chord mapping and now you can So even if you even if you change it, it will change the, the code as well and it will change the scale according to the code. So yeah, if you leave, if I put back in scale now and I Basically, every time I press a note, it triggers the pad and you have the sequence as well. So this is the melody of the sequence. It's set by the Snake Max for Life device, but obviously the scale by, on the device is C major, but obviously it doesn't matter because it's this one determine the scale. So it will always change. And if I am in this instant code mapping and I press here, every time I press a new code, Basically, the scale will change, and this one will change as well. So, with just placing one note, basically, you are triggering a full chord pad sound, an arpeggiator, and a sequence that is tuned according to the chord you play. So, that's pretty crazy. And then, after obviously, you can uh, pitch differently and I just think I could have another track, for example, with a bass track and having an arpeggiator that could change and follow as well which chord I'm playing. And basically, when I was showing in the setting here, show octave and it's on scale, you can basically straight away change the mode from the push. So the three first blue is the three top one. And then after, when you go down, you can change the pitch gated and you can go off being on the scale on the chord and then after if you want to do instant chord and here you can change your octave here for example from there yeah so everything is there but this is kind of getting a little bit too messy for me so i rather deactivate it and keep things clean but yeah if you want to play and jam i think it's a great things to have this feature and yeah i think that's pretty much it for today guys so i hope you like this video guy i hope it helped you to understand a little bit how the plugin work i hope if you like the plugin you can grab it i will put it in the description uh, it's not a free product unfortunately but i think it's worth the investment it's really great especially if like me sometimes you play a chord and you have an idea in your head what the next chord has to be how it has to sound but you cannot put it down because you don't have music theory knowledge and uh, this is a great way you can have all of the code and pick up the one you know is gonna fit after so yeah very great plugin thank you very much for watching guy and see you soon bye bye